Bang! Week 15. We're here to bring you the good stuff. Is it Christmas next when this releases? No, next uh, week. It's like the weekend, I think, Christmas, right? Next I'm not weekend, though. I'm really familiar with the holiday, so. Why not? I'm um, what they call a Jew. What's that like? When you're a child, it's not great, man. When all your friends are <laughs> Catholic and they're getting presents, it's tough. Really? Because we were, I feel like we were always kind of jealous of you that you celebrated for like a week. Oh, That's a lie. It's not the way our town grew up. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a lot of no. uh, What we're doing today, we're going to go through position by position for week 15, looking at ECR, expert consensus rankings, as per fantasy pros. We're going to go quarterback, talk about one guy outside of the top 12 we like, running back, one guy in the top 20. That we dislike one guy outside that we like for each of us you get the gist of it we'll get into more detail as we continue moving along let's jump right in all righty then i guess we'll start with the quarterbacks fuck it do you have one that you absolutely love nick so i wouldn't say that i absolutely love him but i'm not sad about getting him into my lineup um new york New York. New York Giants. Daniel Jones. This is a guy I like. He's right now the QB 17, and he's playing a team that he just played in the Washington Commanders. The last two weeks, Daniel Jones, back-to-back QB 1 finishes. He finished 11, he finished 12, and he's ranked outside of that right now. So that's why I really just like the value here. Um, Also, he ran for 70 yards versus the uh, Commanders two weeks ago. He gets them again. Daniel Jones has that upside with his legs. And he's a guy that, like, you don't feel good about starting him, but for some reason he gets it done. He finds a way to get it done, whether it's with his legs or he has a good passing game. Um, so I just like Daniel Jones, uh, you know, as the QB 17 right now. I think he's going to actually have a really good week. And this is a huge game for the Giants, too. I mean, they tied this team uh, two weeks ago. Tough game. Played well. I think he'll do that again. Maybe get a win. Also, two weeks ago, Daniel Jones ran for 71 yards against his defense. And, Did. yeah, I think I think Washington has problems trying to contain quarterbacks on the ground. So I think his baseline is pretty high. And, my only worry with Daniel Jones is that is that he's a quarterback and he's not good at throwing the ball. A little bit, but also Washington just went on a bye, so for the past three weeks they've been at least they're, probably like hyper focused on concern Daniel too. Jones. Like, yeah, that was the only thing that really beat him, and they're probably just going to be like, let's put a, a spy on him or something the entire game. Yeah. All right, my guy. I'm not proud of it. I'm plugging my nose. Uh, here I'm we throwing go. it in the lineup. Mm, I'm going to go Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan. I you're going to go Brock Purdy. No, I no, I mean, tonight, otherwise you probably would have. Oh, true, true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I probably oh, would have too. <laughs> yeah, no, Brock Purdy gets the Seahawks. He's going to tear him up. Nah, fuck Brock Purdy. But look, Matt Ryan, you've all probably <laughs> dropped him. You've all probably sworn him off. Y'all probably forgot he was even a quarterback in the NFL because it, it seems like every week, Jeff Saturday or whoever the coach is for the Colts is considering benching him. But against the Vikings, who are terrible against the pass, Matt Ryan could do a little bit of damage against them. I I think, I, I don't think he's going to go for like, you know, 25-ish points, but I think he can get you like a solid 16, 17. I think you can do worse than him. Vikings also put up a lot of points themselves, so Matt Ryan and the Colts should be in a position to where they have to throw the ball. Really, I think Jonathan Taylor tears this defense up, and maybe he gets them down in the red zone. Matt Ryan flips one to You like Jonathan Giovanni. Taylor this week? Yeah, of Big, course. Huge week? Yeah, huge week. Like if you got him a deal or no deal, you'd be excited? <laughs> Son of a <laughs> 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 I saw his already, so I feel yeah, like it's only fair well. at this point. It don't matter. Gus yeah. Edwards RB1 in Baltimore. <laughs> I feel like he's actually, actually going to go. Yes. Like, he's going to get two goal line scores or some bullshit. He's going to fucking need it. Um, okay, so you are on. I'm on Matt Ryan. That's sad. That's it, sad. It's it. so sad. I get it, but I was looking at him. I, I had my eye on him, but no, I couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah, no shot. Um, also, real quick, real quick. Brett Rippon, just take a look at him. He threw the ball 46 times. Take a look at him and then move your eyes. He yeah. threw the ball 46 times against the Jets last time, so like he's going to throw it. He's good. That's right. fair. Let's talk about guys who are running it. And I'll go right into my guy. Uh, Jarek McKinnon is the RB36 right now. Now, there's some recency bias. He's coming off a massive game, which he was, like, super involved in the passing game. They're playing against Houston. But, like, this means him and Pacheco are probably going to get 15 to 20 touches apiece here, right? Like, they're 14-point favorites. They're uh, they're going to get an insane amount of work between the two of them like I, I just think that the, the trust with McKinnon grows by the week and even looking back this is the, the time of the year last year when McKinnon was popping off for like 17 18 19 touches a game when Clyde was dealing with like an ankle injury or whatever he became the workhorse so we've yeah. seen this time of the year they like they lean on McKinnon and I feel like he's just going to continue rolling through the Houston Texans so at RB 36 like I'm, I'm putting him in my my lineup as like a back end RB2 oh 100 percent I, I agree with everything you're saying I actually had McKinnon as my guy too yeah I think he's just going to be that guy this year like you said he, he showed a little bit of it last year we're in the in this playoff run he was popping off but he he's going to be that like that Tim Hightower, that Jeremy Hill, that C.J. Anderson, that random running back that just wins you a championship. 
I feel like he's been set up to be that guy for like six years. This might be the year. I mean, he kind of did it last year, he's I guess. Done it, yeah. Yeah. This is it. This is it right here. Houston. Yeah, I'm not against it. I'm slightly worried about this week with the Houston matchup just in case, like, you know, Kansas City gets too far ahead or something. He's not involved. But it's been stuff. such a two running back, like, committee there that they have to split the work. Yeah, I don't see, like, Pacheco yeah. getting 30 carries. No, no, no. I, I think McKinnon's the guy they go to to, like, kill the clock and protect the lead. Me too. It's almost like they want to protect Pacheco at that point for whatever reason. Yeah. But, yeah. The other guy I really liked, and I'm, I'll just hack it on to yours because I know who you're going with, but – the Carolina Panther, Panthers running backs. I, I'm really big on uh, Donta Foreman. Um, I think he's just looked really good. And ever since Steve Wilkes has taken over the job from Matt Rule, they've been able to run the ball. I just feel like aligning yourself with Steve Wilkes is not good for your personal Dude, I brand. think, I, I mean, I think, I think Steve Wilkes is a good coach. Yeah, I think he's going to be the future coach I mean, for the Panthers. Just, I mean, he's yeah. proved a lot this year. I feel like he should be. If he's not, then there's definitely an issue there because he, he's taken that team that was – Probably one of the worst teams in the league earlier on in the season and turned it around completely. He's made him respectable for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, to go off what you said, yeah, Chuba Hubbard. That's the guy that I'm looking at. He's ranked uh, uh, running back 41 right now. Look, his last two weeks, 14, 74, and one versus Seattle. Of course, you know, Seattle's run deed, not great, but still, getting the rock. 17 for 65 the week before. And the Panthers are just like you said, they're establishing the run. They are going to run the ball with Deonta. They're going to run the ball with Hubbard. They're going to make sure Sam Darnold doesn't really have any reason to make a lot of mistakes. And that's just why I'm going with him. Like Hubbard is a guy I hated all year. I never wanted any piece of this guy until two weeks ago when he started getting involved. And look, they're just going to keep pounding the rock. I'm going to take one of the guys that's getting the rock. I like Foreman a lot. I do like Yeah, Foreman, Foreman with 21 carries last week. That's huge. Also, Pittsburgh, bottom three defense in defending the run when there's multiple tight ends on the field. That's all Carolina did. 12 personnel, 13 personnel. That's how they were that's able to That's wild because I can't even like name a tight end that they have, yet they're running out three of them. Right. But, so, they're, I mean, essentially, they're just running out with eight linemen. Ian Thomas. I don't know, but yeah. it, they're just – They might Tom be – Sweeney, maybe, Ian Thomas. That's not a good pull there. I feel like those are the only two that I yeah. can think of. I mean, I think they they're only have really two on just... the roster, but somehow they're running out three tight ends. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, just sixth and seventh left tackles, right tackles, whatever. Sure, but um, yeah, I I, I think they kind of push around the the Steelers this week. Yeah, I do too. Like Chuba Hubbard, also he's only owned in thirty nine percent of leagues. Like he's only rostered in thirty nine percent. So there's a chance he might be on your waiver wire. Like you might be able to actually go pick him up. So uh, it's just another reason why I like him. So you like Chuba Hubbard. I hate his ass, but I digress. Dislikes. This is this is kind of tough because everyone inside the top 20 is actually like a good running back at this point. I, I guess on the flip side, I'm nervous about a few of them. Zonovan Knight's a dude that I actually really, really like. But basically what I said for Mike White, it's the opposite for running backs going against Detroit. He's the RB18 right now, and you're probably playing him. But again, Detroit has allowed the second fewest fantasy points to the running back position over the last two uh, five weeks. They've just been shutting down like good, good fucking running backs coming their way. So I'm worried about um, I'm worried about Zonovan Knight, and I have a couple others on the list that I, I want to get into, but I don't want to like take your guys all riff off if you guys have them. I might have one that you have, I think. So hey, you want me to do it? Rip it. Sure. Joe Mixon. Here's a guy that I I like Hate Joe Mixon. His ass. I like Joe Mixon. It's just this week I'm really not really feeling him just because he's playing the Bucks. They're a top ten defense. Uh, against the run for when it comes to fantasy running backs and Samaji is there, man. Samaji, so, Samaji's the thing. Samaji looks looks good. Looks like he's going to be stealing uh, receptions. And also Joe Mixon, he's ranked RB eleven right now, and I just see him finishing outside easily the top fifteen. I think this week the Bucks have just been a very good defense. So I think that the the Bengals are probably going to have to throw the ball a lot more this week. Feels I like know Mixon's going to have to score like at least two goal lines. Yeah, he's, he, this looks like, like really a good. like an eleven for forty game when he needs a touchdown to be relevant. You yeah. know, like I think they're going to rely on the on Joe Burrow's arm. Uh, yeah, T. Higgins might be a problem, but you know they have other weapons. They'll figure it out. I, I like this Bengals team. Their passing attack, their rushing attack, it, it scares me this week. Uh, one guy that I don't feel great about this week is James Conner. He didn't have a bad game last week. He actually finished as the RB5. He's He's been stringing together good games, actually, but I just don't know how sustainable it is. Like, last week he had seven targets, but I kind of feel like that was a product of Kyler Murray going down and the Cardinals just panic and it was like, what do we do? Uh, throw the ball to James yeah. Conner. Who knows? Just Colt McCoy checking down. Right. Like, I, maybe that happens again, but against the Broncos' defense, I'm not excited to start James Conner. They don't let up a whole lot to, to running back, so... Connor's been eating though, dude. He really like, has, but I, it, it's almost like he's like you could almost pencil him for a touchdown more than anyone. But if he doesn't get that touchdown, he's really going to disappoint you. It feels, feels like, like he has Jamal a little Williams flow. with more upside. Yeah. Right, he's getting like ninety five percent of the touches though. Yeah, too. I don't actually hate him this week just because of the fact that like the Broncos. Pasty is so good that they're not going to be able to really get anything done through the air. That they're probably just going to run the ball as much as they can, and whether or not James Conner does gonna, something, you're going to regret this take. 
Yeah, Remember maybe. Remember when Ike was talking about best and worst takes? This is this is getting fucking clipped. I don't know. I, I don't have a whole lot of the confidence in James Conner. Another guy I don't like, though, probably a better option, Nick Chubb. Again, I just don't trust this offense with Deshaun Watson back there. He's had bad back-to-back weeks against Houston, against Cincy. Uh, obviously, against Houston, that was Deshaun Watson's first game, but I think it was just concerning to see how dysfunctional that offense was. Now going up against the Ravens. I was Yeah, I was like looking back because I wanted to put Chubb on the list, but... I was like, Baltimore's defense is getting kind of gritty right now. He has like on and off games. It's very much Nick. He either goes like 11 for 30 against him or he goes like 18 for 95, two touchdowns. So it's like, fuck, that's like Nick Chubb. Just anyways, you know, it doesn't really yeah. matter against the matchup for me. Uh, while we may not like Nick Chubb for this particular matchup, there's no one in the world that does not like a Nick Chubb signed Cleveland Browns helmet. It's this a clean is, signature. It's a clean Siggy. It's a clean helmet. It's it's a pretty beautiful helmet. Yeah, I actually like that a lot. I'd rather keep this in the office, but we're going to give it away because Pristine Auction gave it to us to give away to you guys. You can enter this raffle absolutely free. You go over to Pristine Auction. The link will be in the description down below. Ike, make sure you put it down there, please. And when you click it, go sign up for the site. Use the code BDGE when you sign up. You don't have to put any money down to enter the raffle. But when you do sign up with BDGE, they're also going to give you $10 towards your first raffle, which you could use for another signed helmet, for a signed bat or ball or glove or cleats or pair of fucking underwear. They have a lot of things on there. Anything that you have a kink or fetish for, they've got an auction for. All right. So go sign up for Pristine Auction, code BDGE, automatic entrance into the raffle, $10 towards your first raffle. Nick Chubb. Fuck it. Get them in your lineups. Um, there are a lot of like questionable running backs, I feel like. Yeah. I worry about Nick Chubb's touchdowns. I, I kind of worry about Saquon a little bit. He's been like kind of terrible over the last month and a half. I, I look back at like last six games, averaging. Started off so great. Yeah, averaging 3.3 to... 3 yards per carry, averaging 13 receiving yards a game. He doesn't have a single receiving touchdown on the year. And it's probably because DJ has 12 in fucking 13 games. So mm-hmm. sitting here like you don't sit Saquon, but I mean, against Washington, it wasn't a great game. He did score a touchdown, so he got in. But Saquon worries me a little bit. Travis Etienne against Dallas because he doesn't catch fucking passes anymore, really. So they also don't run the ball yeah. well. The only they thing I like well. about uh, Saquon is at least he had 18 carries against uh, Washington, which is on the higher side for him um, lately, at least. Because, I mean, last game he had nine. He had 11 the week before against Dallas. 15 it's like, is he hitting Detroit, a wall right know? now? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's going on played a full season in a while so he could be like that brick wall he's almost like the rookie wall but body's starting to wear down a little yeah. bit maybe you need to hit the ice bath a couple extra times yeah come on saquon let's fucking let's get it going you're making nick look bad <laughs> uh wide receivers this was kind of tough to find guys i like but i went with the moore brothers elijah moore chris moore right what's I, up yeah, baby i'm all in on the jets we're all in on the moors <laughs> we're yep. all in on the jets passing attack which means mike white's probably throwing for 117 but elijah moore at wide receiver 40 if Corey Davis doesn't play, yes, that's dealing the with a concussion, didn't practice on Wednesday. I feel like usually if you're trending towards playing, you typically get a limited practice in at least by when, or at least by Thursday. So yeah. keep an eye on that. If he's out, Elijah Moore, you know, 10 targets last week, becomes the next yeah, guy 16 up. 16 over the last two weeks. So yeah. like, that's just what, that's all I need to see. He's, I actually, a, he's out here. I actually think Elijah Moore does better with Corey Davis in the lineup, though. Corey Davis has been in the lineup these past two weeks, right? He got hurt last week. You, he left super early. Like, he, he got left, one catch, left, left, and then Elijah Moore got 10 targets. Because yeah. I know that when Corey Davis leaves, Elijah Moore goes from the slot to, like, more of an outside guy. If Davis is on the field, he's playing more than Moore is. Yes. Which becomes a problem. He gets, like, the targets and shit. We, we do not want Corey Davis on the field. That's fair. That's probably true. Chris Moore looks great, though. Yes, Chris Moore is a guy I have. I think we all like him, so uh, we could probably all talk about him a little bit. But, I mean, just the, the last week alone, we saw... Um, 11 targets, 10 catches. Yeah, 10 for 124 versus the Cowboys, which obviously no one really expected. Uh, no Brandon Cooks, no Damian Pierce. I mean, they're going to have to Nico throw the Collins ball a lot. Too. I th- Nico Collins it. is like, I don't think he's going to play. I don't think play. either of them are going to play. Yeah. that's it. If one of those dudes is on the field, like Collins or Cooks, I'm not playing Chris Moore. Right. I feel like it, it's very clear, I feel like, when he exceed, when he exceeds, exceeds expectations and when he doesn't. But it's had big games against, like, Philly, Dallas. So it's like these are not bottom-tier defenses. It feels like... When they need him to be the guy, he can kind of do it. And they're playing against KC. They're going to throw the ball fucking 87 times this, yeah. this week. So Yeah, three quarterbacks to throw the ball. Like, they got every, they're got they ready. Chris yeah, yeah it really doesn't ball. matter. <laughs> the three-headed monster under center. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, we like both of the Moors. Anyone else? Yeah, another guy I like is Zay Jones. So, last week, eight catches, 12 targets. Uh, he's been very up and down. We kind of talked about the Jags. I think that was like a week ago. How uh, it it kind of seems like they go, they go in these tides and they're they're not consistent. But it does feel like Trevor Lawrence is piecing together this offense a little bit. Um, we also said you know they can't run the ball. They've really only been successful when they when they're passing it. So yeah, I don't know. I think say I like think, you fucking mean it. Say it with your chest. 
Say what? That I like Zay Jones? Yeah. Say. I fucking like I, Zay Jones. How do you not like Zay Jones? I like, like he, Zay Jones. I mean, yeah, he looks good. It's just, you know, his floor is low, so he can obviously disappoint you. But I like him more than Christian Kirk this week, actually. I'm, I'm starting to get there really? a little bit. I'm yeah, not, just, like, fully the there. Matchup. I don't fully believe that, but I could I guess I could that could be too. They're kind of, like, similar players, though. I feel like they just move inside, outside, or just... I, I don't know if, like, the corner... I'm, I'm assuming you're saying that because you think uh, what's-his-face is going to be it's, on Christian Yeah, Kirk. he could be. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he will be, but maybe even if he's on him half the game, it's just going to cut his targets, you know, down a little bit. I just think, uh, I think... I think Diggs being on your fantasy wide receiver is actually a benefit. I like kind of... The, dude, the yeah. dude gives up huge plays. Hey, it's, it's you know, just reading, reading the thing. He gives and takes. I like Zay Jones as a player more than I think I just like him this week, if that makes sense. I think the Cowboys defense kind of overrated. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they. I, I know the, like Houston had a lot of short fields, and you know they were put in good spots by the the Dallas offense, but I, I don't know. Do the just, Cowboys like play down to their opponents? Or is that like one of those things where you feel like maybe like they like, the, like last week with the Texans? Like, yeah, I mean, but in. like you said, Dak kept throwing like fucking interceptions on the five yard line, yeah, yeah. yeah, like on their own five yard line. So it's like obviously any team is going to look good when their defense is off the field and shit. All right, uh, anyone else that we like? Uh, no, I hate everybody else outside of the top 24. I got a, a real quick one. I don't really want to go into detail on it, but Alan Lazard, he was a league winner last year. And I just think some of these guys, they just come alive at the end of the season. Alan Lazard, give me him, whatever. Yeah. Not, I'm not feeling great about it, but he was a league winner last year. He helped a lot of people. I think he could do it again this year. Christian Watstein season. That's what everyone thinks. Because it's, it's what we've seen. <laughs> what do you mean? There's no, there's no logic to go the other way on that. Doesn't need doesn't need logic. You know what doesn't make any fucking sense? How bad Mike Evans is. Yo. Oh, we all have Mike Evans. All my homies hate Mike <laughs> Evans, I mean, dude. Like, I think that's the one name we all I put down. I think he could have gone with Chris Godwin too. Like he could have picked either one of them because neither of them are scoring touchdowns. They both get like fifty yards a game, no touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. I mean Mike Evans, wide receiver twenty four. It's just like this. Th- you know what this this does kind of feel like every single person in the world now realizes how bad Mike Evans has been, which means probably He's gonna pop off. Probably the big week, but it's just like. Brady no. just lives under pressure. It's not allowing any time, like any place to develop downfield. Since he's also like super good against wide yeah. receivers, they have good cornerbacks, good safeties. Like uh, this is just one of those games where I don't like. He's gonna have to catch a seventy yard touchdown. Yeah, they don't really allow big plays yeah. either. Bengals. They like they keep everything in front of them and just yeah. Uh, bottom he, three in terms of he hasn't caught a touchdown pass since week four. He's got only two games over 100 yards receiving this season. Like it's just not the same Mike Evans that we're used to. He's unreliable and underperforming each week. I can't trust him. Hate yeah. to see it. S- since week eight, the best he's done is finish as the wide receiver 34. So he's not even a startable guy. It's Jesus it's Christ. been so Sounds horrible. So bad. Bucks yeah. still making their Super Bowl run. It's looking not no not dude. Great. Panthers are taking that division. <laughs> looking not Bro. great. Yeah, they might, dude. They, they're they one might. game back and have the tiebreaker. They might. They want to bet on it? Might. We're all, we're yeah. Steve Wilkes brand now. So. Yeah. We're huge with Steve. <laughs> Don't, you can't bang me on a Steve Wilkes. I banged Steve you Wilkes, on a Steve Dave. Wilkes. So I can't wait for the Steelers to win 21 to 3 against the Panthers this weekend. That would be, that would be really bad for us. You know what's ridiculous about the Bucks? It seems like Tom Brady has lost his connection with all of his receivers. It yeah. feels like they reverted all those, I guess, what is this, their third year to being together? Yeah. How much of this do you think is Arians leaving? A lot. Oh, because like he was an offensive coach. I know Tom Brady still is like the guy. And you know, I think it's one hundred percent the the health of the line. Yeah, I mean that's definitely a huge their, part. Of their it. play calling sucks too. Yeah, I mean they they try to run the ball on first down. They're yeah. not successful with it. If I feel like they're always in second and third and long, like it's terrible. Yeah, I think Bruce mattered a little bit more than people thought. Yeah, yeah. Bucks Bucks are fucking terrible. Yeah, I hate not great. Them. Not all my great. all my homies hate the Bucks. You know, you know what else? else? Everyone hates. <laughs> <laughs> Tight, tight ends, tight ends. <laughs> <laughs> all tight ends. We was thinking it. Yeah, I mean the entire position is trash, but here's like three guys you might find some luck with outside of the top twelve. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I have one at the twelve. I cheated. Put Cole is, Komet. Oh, did you? I thought you were, Chig was thirteen, right? Chig was thirteen. Cole okay. Komet was twelve. Cole Komet, I kind of just love now that Darnell Mooney's out. They have like yeah. fucking nobody to throw the ball to. Yeah. Big game last week. Seven targets, six catches, seventy two yards. Plays Philly, so. I mean, you can't get excited about the matchup, but I feel like he's just locked into seven targets. Like, give me that with a fucking tight end. Yeah, I mean, at this point, like, if you don't have a Kelsey or a Hawkinson, I don't even know. Who Relax, like, yeah. Yeah, so I'm saying. Just like, ended after Kelsey. If you don't have Kelsey, then you might as well just throw these guys out there. I mean, that's it. Like, you don't have to feel good about it, but. I feel better about Komet than Shiggy. Really? <sighs> yeah. I'm lighting up Chig the Chig. Chig. He's been super I consistent. He's got three straight weeks with five plus targets. And that's a tight end. Yeah, he's one of those dudes I'm just... Like, I like him, too. He's a fun player, but I'm just waiting on his downfall. Like they're running know? plays for him. Like, they're like he doesn't he doesn't get a lot of snaps, but at this point, like, 
it's a tight end. You just want him to get some points. If they're putting him on the field, like, you know, not a lot, but at least the plays that they're putting him on the field for are for him. I don't hate him. I, I kind of, I, I really love Chig. I think yeah. he could have a really good game against the Chargers, too. This yeah. is what Austin Hooper was supposed to be. Yeah. Austin Hooper oh, had, like, yeah. more production than he did last week, which kind of scares me. It feels like if Chiggy doesn't catch the one big ball, though, like, what's he does he catch done? a 30-yard His floor is every game, so yeah. fucking low. I mean, he started off last week so hot, yeah. and then they just, like, went away from him. Yeah, I they don't do know. Derrick Henry, and it was against yeah. the Jags, so I don't, yeah. I don't necessarily blame him. I also kind of like Tyler Conklin uh, yep, against Detroit, name, right? right? Since I've already named every fucking New York Jets player in this episode. 15 targets over the last two weeks. Detroit allows top five most most fancy points to the tight end position. Gets a lot of targets. Hasn't done a fucking thing with them. But eventually, one of those is going to turn into a big play. One of those is going to turn into, yeah. you know, an end zone score or something like that. So Corey Davis do doesn't play. I really like him. Yeah. Just to have that extra guy that's out that you know is going to take targets. Yeah. I feel like Hunter Henry, we don't really need to talk about him. He's just been one of the more solid uh, tight ends over the last couple of weeks. And with all the injuries going around uh, New England, he's probably a good option. My favorite, absolute favorite tight end for this week, Greg Dulcich. Rostered in only 44% of leagues, so there's really? a chance you might actually be able to pick him up. And he's playing Arizona this week, the absolute mm. worst defense against tight ends. We just saw Hunter Henry go for 70 yards against him. Uh, Greg Dulcich got some targets from Brett Rippon when he came in. He's really one of the only uh, outside Jerry Judy. I don't know if Cortland Sutton's going to be back. Um, I like Greg Dulcich a lot this week. That's, that a, defense. that's a good call. Yeah, that's kind of ridiculous how low owner, ownership he has. I mean, it's a Bronco player. Like, it's a, a Bronco <laughs> offensive player. It's right tough answer. to really just kind of be like, hey, that guy looks like, you know, I mean, I'm going to start him. Yeah, but he's been nice. Yeah, he has. And then I like Trey McBride. So hear me out. The matchup is gross. Playing the Broncos, probably not the best matchup. But if you're at the tight end position, you're looking at there's no one there. So at this point, if you don't have the Kelsey or one of the three guys, you need to find someone and Trey McBride is available. I would consider starting him. He's you know, the 28th uh, ranked tight end right now. But last week with Colt McCoy. How big of a wow. fucking league you got to be <laughs> listen, in to start Trey listen, McBride? Listen, listen, listen. He had six targets with Colt McCoy last week. That's the most targets he's received all season. It's just not a, it's not a great position. There's not a lot of options there. I'm not saying, hey, go start Trey McBride. I'm saying if you have absolutely nobody and Trey McBride is available, I wouldn't feel terrible about throwing him in there. I, I think we just listed three way better options. One of those yeah, guys got to be there. For sure. There's but no chance. Yeah, if you're in a 14 McBride. league, 16 league, I don't know. There's a lot of people out there. There's a lot more people still. <laughs> you could probably find someone else. I'm just saying. Trey McBrizzy, defense. All right, Washington, the commandos. Uh, they are the, I think they're the ninth or 10th in ECR. Definitely pick up a bull. They're playing the Giants. They're at home. Now, they just played them, and they had four sacks against the Giants. Uh, their last four games, the Washington defense is averaging 12 fantasy points per game. Games of 19, 15. The lowest outing they had was seven points. So, like, they're never in the in the negative for you, and it seems like they're kind of on the plus side with their D-line getting healthier and healthier. And they've just been – they're one of the teams that have actually, like, flipped the switch. Second half of the year, defense is showing up. Like the matchup against the Giants, who have super one-dimensional with Jones and, and Barkley there. Um, so Washington is definitely a team that I'm, I'm looking to stream this week. Um, I believe Tony and I both love the Panthers. I know you just love Panthers everything. Yeah, I, I'm just big on the Panthers this week. Yeah, I, I like I like the Panthers a lot this week. Uh, possible Mitch Trubisky, possible Mason Rudolph. We don't really know who's going to be starting for the other team right now, but I feel pretty good about either one of those guys starting yeah, going I mean, up against this defense. Mitch Trubisky just th threw three of the worst picks you'll ever see in your life <laughs> against the Ravens. Yeah, this is also the Panthers are at home, so I love a good home. I love a good home defense, and um, I I really like the Saints. This is my favorite defense of the week. Sorry, Nick. This is more of just, I'm going to bet against a rookie quarterback on his first start. That's all it is. Against the Saints who are at home who... Falcons plus four is the fucking easiest pick of the week. Yeah, says the Falcons fan. It's Look, no bias. It's just one of those you got the Saints at home. Yeah, division game. Yeah, not um, playing great recently, but this is a chance for them to just right the ship, you know, against, against a uh, rookie quarterback and go out there and uh, beat him down. No, rookie quarterback brings new energy to the team. Sure, but it also could be, you know... Scared energy. It's game over I don't know. for you, animal. It, it's tough because I feel like, I mean, you obviously have like no scouting report on Desmond Ritter. And Marcus Mariota's been so bad, it's hard to get worse than him to where I think the, the Falcons offense, not that they're so, going to or it's likely that they turn around, but I, it's just glad there's a better that. chance that they're better with anybody else. I'm glad you said that because it's hard to get like worse than Mariota. So why did they wait so long to put Ritter in? Because he must not be that great. They must have... Kept believing in well, Mariota. Well, he like kept us in contention. I, I think yeah, they the, were I think the start of the year was different than what Mariota's been doing recently. It yeah, was basically like, like they probably made the decision like two weeks ago, but needed to to have Mariota like really fall off before they implemented the actual plan. Like, all right, we're kind of falling out here. We'll give him one more game to see if he just like blows the fucking doors off this thing and we'll let him rip if if he does. If not, let's make the move. And I think Ritter's gonna come out as like someone you said doesn't have a 
big scouting report on him. Obviously, they know him from college and stuff. Super mobile guy. I think, like, Mariota is athletic and mobile. He doesn't use it enough. No. He doesn't use it to his advantage where, like, he should. We should let the rain. We should go with, like, a fucking Justin Fields style of offense. And I think Desmond Ritter comes out, maybe runs for 40, 50, 60 yards and, and a score and gets the energy going in the offense. So, absolute lock of the cinch. All right, Will. We shall see. All right, then. Another defense I really like, just want to throw out there. Are talk about the Panthers again? Yeah. <laughs> I fucking am. Did you know that Steve Wilkes is <laughs> taking over for the Panthers? The team that Steve Wilkes <laughs> used to coach still has a stench on him. No, but uh, Patriots. Playing the Raiders. Raiders offense has been nice. They've been they've been scoring points. They've been getting yards, but that's not always what translates into into fancy points for a defense. You need those turnovers. You need those sacks. And I feel like Belichick playing a former staff member. I guess you would call him former a, a disciple of his own former uh, colleague. Former colleague. I think the Patriots have a chance of crushing. The Raiders offense, getting a couple picks, maybe... I look at it the other way. Really? I think Josh McDaniels knows everything Bill Belichick wants to do on defense, and he knows how he can beat it, and then he's going to get his team ready to do that. I feel like it's the other way around. Josh I feel McDaniels like he struggled getting his team ready to I feel do like he beat a lot of things. I feel like he always beats Bill. How many, how many, yeah, how many he times? He beat him with the Broncos. That was the one time. Um, like a decade ago? Did he play them? He's been with them ever since. That's yeah, true. He went to the Colts and then didn't go. Well, he beat them with the Broncos. He's 1-0 against Bill, you idiot. You think he's going <laughs> to... Yeah, I mean... You I'm, know what's crazy? <laughs> that, like, New England is... They're a pretty widely available uh, defense. They're the number one scoring defense in fantasy right now. Yeah, I mean, well, I think it's because they've had some weeks against terrible offenses, and they just light them up for, like, 20, 25 yeah. points, and that might skew it a little bit. They've definitely had some down weeks, but like I'm saying... I you mean, look this at the is, other top five, it's like... Cowboys, Niners, Eagles, Bills, Ravens. Like, you're not surprised at them. And then it's the yeah. Patriots are above all of those teams. Raiders could throw up 28 points, but the Patriots' defense for fantasy could also go off. So, throw I like 28 them. points. Right, exactly. <laughs> I like them. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a, a, a D score. There was one more that I had. I lost it, though. Oh, Cincinnati. Well, we talked about how much we hate the Bucks. Bucks struggle to score two touchdowns. So, kind of reverse where I think the Cincinnati Bengals' defense has a Good baseline because Tom Brady ain't shit no more. So that's uh that's your last. That's it. We all good. All right. Bang. I have nothing else to say uh, except for thank you guys for joining us today. Make sure you go hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Good luck. If this is your week one playoff matchup, I hope we helped you out. If this is your buy, sit bike, relax, tuck your shirt in, order some good food on this Sunday, get some margaritas flowing, and we will see y'all next Friday. Same app. I think I like this. Uh, I think I like this format a little bit. Not too shabby. Thirty minutes in, tight, out, and uh, and that's it. So enjoy the weekend.